Saxon Algebra 1, half less than 59. Greeting students. Proportions with fractions is the name of this topic, and I think it's going to make you feel smart. Just wrote on myself with my marker. That makes me feel not smart. So we've got uh, jammy, and we've got, oh, Jojo, your mammal name. It's a rabbit. It's a fluffy name. I can't think of it right. Lala. It's Lala, I'm pretty sure. Remind me if that's right. Um, Alexis, here's the situation. Last year, we named our math brains. We, we, we conceptualize our math, the math part of our brains, as being some sort of furry, cute little mammal, and we give them a name. Joel has a hamster named Jammy, and Jojo has a bunny named Lala. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Jojo, on that one. And I think you're with Alexis right now, so you can correct. You can tell her if I'm wrong. Um, so Alexis, you need to think of what your spirit animal is, your math spirit animal. Um, any kind of little mammal, any name you want, decide, and we will discuss on uh, Thursday when I check in with you. All right, that's enough distraction for now. Proportions we remember, it's just a fancy name when we have something like this. 2 over 4 equals 4 over 8. It's a pair of fractions. Each one could be considered a ratio, right? Because we learned that a ratio is just a fraction. Um, and when you set them equal to each other, they're true. You can have a false one if you just put random numbers in there. But a proportion is when the two fractions really are equal to each other. And what we learned is that when you cross multiply, in a proportion, you will always get equal, right? Two times eight equals 16, and four times four equals 16. It'll always be true, which is cool. Remember, this is called cross multiplying. And these problems are popular in homework because what you can do is give a student any three numbers and then put a letter in there um, for the fourth one and then say solve for the missing piece. That's what we're going to do today, only we're going to make it a little bit harder. Instead of having two, four, four, and eight, just plain numbers there, we're going to put fractions in the top and bottom of the fractions. It's fractions and fractions, you guys, but it's okay. It's not hard. Let me show you. 59.1. It looks scary, and you have to kind of read it carefully. I exaggerate this line because I want to make sure you can see it differently from that line. But it's 2 thirds over x equals 5 eighths over 1 fifth. John tends to make these lines, these bigger lines, he makes them shorter in length. They're not as exaggerated and long as mine, but they tend to be a little darker. So this line shows up in the problem as a little bit darker than these shorter lines. So you have to look for that. Now you can see the four chunks of the problem, just like we could see the four there really easily. And we use the very same technique. We're going to cross multiply. Um, and I could have written it here. I could have written two times eight equals four times four. So you could see the pieces. Let's do that this time. It's going to be two thirds times one fifth. Remember, we go top on one side to bottom on the other equals um, I'm going to write the fraction first because we're a little bit used to seeing it that way. And then the X, I'm going to put it over a 1. So it's in the fraction club. All right. So all I did here, I, I created these pairs of cross-multiplying factors just the same. I just wrote the X second because we're used to seeing the X after the number. If you don't mind, you can write it the other way. It's fine. Now, before I multiply these, I'm going to do the the next to last step. I know I want this x by myself, by itself. I don't want to divide by 5 eighths. That's a nightmare. So once again, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, both sides, right? Then 5 over 8 equals 40. 8 over 5, 8, or I'm sorry, I'm saying the wrong thing. 5 times 8 equals 40. 8 times 5 equals 40. 40 over 40 equals 1. All of this then disappears and we're left with just x. Oh, so cute, right? Now, before we do anything over here, we look to see if we can cancel anything. 
And for the love of Pete, we cannot. We could cancel the two and the eight, but they're both tops, so we can't do that. We could cancel the five and five, but we can't because they're both bottoms. Dang it. So all we can do is multiply across, and I'm gonna say x equals, eight times two is 16, don't have to worry about the one. And I'm gonna do five times five is 25, that's a quarter, three quarters is 75 cents. That's our final answer. Kind of cute, kind of fun. This um, solving by multiplying by proportions, it's something we're gonna do a lot as a step in a bigger problem. I will reveal that to you guys when um, we get further down the road. All these things that we're gonna be, that we've been learning, we're going to keep using them. They'll just be one step in a multi-step problem, okay? So these are all like, um, you're learning how to use a screwdriver and a hammer and a pair of pliers and a wrench, and later we're gonna build a bookcase, if that makes sense to you. I love a good metaphor, don't you? Okay, there's only one other problem in this lesson, 59.2, and it's the same way. It just looks a little different because we have X in one of the four areas by itself, and then underneath we have three-fourths, and then over here, Okay, I'm just copying to make sure I wrote it right. It looks really good. So again, we cross multiply. I always start here and go down first. So again, I'm gonna write two fifths times X over one, just so that everything's a fraction and I like the X to be second. And then I'll do, this is equals, and then we do the other side, three fourths times one third. Okay, and before I do any work on this, I'm gonna bring the last part over We'll multiply by the reciprocal, five over two. Now that cancels, we're left with the x. Now is there anything I can cancel here? Oh, we can get the three and the three, right? We'll divide each of those by three and we'll be left with one in that place. And that's all we can do because five doesn't go into four or two. So we're left with x equals five over eight. And that's our final answer. Fun, right? It makes most students feel very smart to be able to do a, pra a problem that has fractions and fractions. That's kind of feeling sophisticated in advance. I hope you feel smart. I hope that Lala and Jammy and whoever Alexis's spirit animal turns out to be are just glowing in their little wheels right now. This all started, um, Alexis, because we were talking about how your math brain is kind of like a hamster where it has to get up and start running on that little wheel. And when you first start running, if you can imagine yourself as a hamster, it's kind of hard to make the wheel go around, right? At first it's kind of slow and maybe the wheel's even a little rusty or creaky or needs a little oil. Can you see my hands? I'm doing this to be my hamster. And that you have to get it up and running uh, before you can really feel like you're zooming along. Okay, so I hope all of your spirit animals are zooming around on their little wheels. I will see you in a few minutes. I think you watch these back to back. Uh, lesson 60 coming up. Goodbye.